Hi, I'm Pete Rivard, Principal Instructor for Dunwoody College of Technologies Graphics and Printing Technologies Program. We are um, we're talking structural design for packaging today, and this is a demonstration of the cutting table. You'll also hear about tables like this called sample tables. They might be called prototyping tables. They might be called uh, CAD tables. It's all the same thing. And this is where the designer proves out their design by taking a computer file and turning it into a physical object. Uh, today's material, again, is corrugated material. This is E-flute corrugated. It's 1 16th of an inch thick. And this is what Nate is going to uh, reproduce his tray with. Uh, he has a piece on the table here, so this is as good a time as any to introduce you to the components of the table itself. Um, this large area, the large flat area, is called the bed. The substrate sits on the bed, and uh, think of it as a reverse air hockey table. There's vacuum that's going to come through this bed and help uh, create some suction that will hold the material down flat and uh, allow for the best accuracy in the, uh, in the cutting sequence. Uh, this is our cutting head right up here. The cutting head has knives, it has scoring wheels, it even has pens if we want to use it to draw. Today what we're going to be using is called the reciprocating knife. A reciprocating knife is essentially an X-Acto blade that goes up and down as well as, as being dragged through the material. So it's going to saw through the corrugated material and create our cuts. The scoring wheels are going to crush the corrugated and create the folds um, that allow us to do this sort of thing right here. So a couple things about the table, a couple of safety rules that we really have to concern ourselves with. If you are the operator of the cutting table, and today, Nate Eulen, second year student, is our operator. If you are operating the table, at no time can you leave the table while it is in operation. You need to stay right here. You can't start it up and go walking out the door and go grab a Coke or something like that. Uh, for safety purposes, you have to stay at the table until your cutting sequence is done. Rule number two, if you are not the operator, you can't bother the person who is the operator. They need to concentrate on what they're doing, they need to focus on the task at hand, and a whole lot of time can be wasted, a lot of material can be wasted, and there might even be the odd injury if uh, the operator is distracted. So if you're the operator, you're here at the table. If you're not the operator, you don't distract the operator. Rule number three is you have to stay a certain distance away from the table while it's in operation because at every corner of the table, at each of the four corners, we have a sensor. And the sensor is lined up with a sensor at uh, the opposing corner and it basically has a light beam that goes across it. And if any part of your body breaks that, that plane of that beam, and it could be on any one of these four sides, the table knows to shut down immediately because it doesn't want anybody getting injured. So it's programmed to shut down and to stop operation if anybody breaks that beam. And what that means is that the operator then has to go back and start over again and start the whole procedure. So you've got to make sure that, that you know, you're limiting your movements, you're not waving your arms about, and that you're pretty much staying behind the tape on the floor which is giving you an indication of where the safety zone is and, uh, and when you're violating that. So those are our three rules. Um, as far as the operation of the table itself, the table is driven by software on this computer. The software is called front end. And essentially front end doesn't do very much. Front end takes our RDOs file the ARD file, which we converted to an HPG. We talked about that in the last video. It takes the HPG file and uh, displays it on this monitor. You verify that it looks no different than it did as when you saw it before on your laptop screen. And if everything is right, then you're able to send it to the table here. Now, the other 
piece that, uh, that you need to uh, learn about today is the controller. And the controller actually sets up the mechanics of the table itself so that when the die line, the HPG file is sent over to this table that the cut begins where you want it to cut, ends where you want it to end, and uh, uses up and wastes as little of our substrate as possible. So, um, Nate is our table operator today. I'm going to make sure that I don't bother him. So what he's going to do right now is uh, he's going to set the table up and, uh, and turn on the vacuum and put that uh, cutting head into its start point, which we're going to call the origin. Now there's a, a green button that Nate just hit right there that uh, tells the table that you are now in operation. You just hit that green button. The button that he just hit on the wall is going to make things a little bit noisy in here because you can hear the air being sucked down uh, to provide the suction for the substrate. He's using the controller to position the cutting head. Now typically, the first when you learn how to operate this table, you're going to be watching what are called the shoes. The shoes are the discs at the bottom of the, of the various uh, tools on the cutting head. You want to get your white shoe, the only shoe there that, that is uh, opaque and white, positioned on the substrate itself, and then he tells the cutting head that that's its origin, that's its starting point. All of the cuts are going to be away in either a horizontal or a vertical direction from that origin. So think of that start point as the lower left hand corner of your computer screen. When you design your die line and it's on your monitor and it might look something like this right here, your origin line is going to be down here in the lower left hand corner and all of the cuts and scores are going to be away from that origin point. So you will need however much material to get from the lower left corner to the upper right corner and include all of the components of your die line. Okay, once the origin is set and Nate has his HPG file uh, loaded into this computer, he's going to tell this computer to run that file. And the file is going to come over here and start to drive the activities of the cutting head. Go ahead, Nate. Now there aren't any cuts being done at that. That wheel that you see going up and down, or the shoe that you see going up and down has the scoring wheel inside. We're going to make all of our folds, all of our scores, before we make our cuts because we don't want our file moving around inside of, a, uh, inside of an already trimmed perimeter. Now the scoring wheel is going up and down fairly frequently any time that it does a half slit, half score. In this case, Nate's design has the exterior tray and it has the interior insert tray. So it's scoring both of those components before it makes any of the cuts on either of them. Now we're cutting. The white shoe again is the reciprocating knife. So in addition to being dragged through the material, it's also going up and down 
to saw through the corrugated material. Okay, we're done. Now what Nate has just done is he's created what we call blanks. And a blank is a two-dimensional, finished, ready-to-fold piece of substrate. He's got a blank for the exterior and he's got a blank for the uh, interior tray as well. And uh, yeah, this is right. This has the... Uh, this has the panels on it as well. So when he pulls those out of there, what's left behind is called the waste matrix. So we've got the blank, which is the, the good stuff, the, uh, the cart material that we'll be able to fold and glue into shape, and then we'll have the bad stuff, which is the waste matrix. And after we've made a certain amount of cuts in uh, this board right here, we'll have to basically uh, throw it out. Another rule of the room, everybody, is none of this ends up on the floor. The waste matrix always goes into the dumpster, and from there it gets recycled. And that's one of the good news about this type of material here. Folding cart material is anywhere between 30 to 50 percent recycled material, and so uh, it gets used again and again and saves on trees. Um, lastly, Everybody gets one of these. This is the Data Technology CAD Table Basic Operations User's Guide. Every one of you guys has one of these, and everything that we saw in our videos today, we go step by step in this uh, user guide right here. Um, so you can pretty much follow along with your video by cruising through this thing as well, and then bring this into the cutting room with you to remind you that you're covering all your steps in the right order. And uh, um, between the videos that we're shooting today and this user guide right here, you should have all of the information that you need right at your fingertips to take your Artios design all the way through to a finished, folded up, and uh, glued structural.